story, I want you to listen for when I give my power away and when I take it back and what caused me in the first place to give it away and ask yourself, what do I mean by power? So as all good stories begin, let's begin with once upon a time, a very long time ago, I lived in San Francisco and I wanted to get my sailing captain's license for up to a 60 foot vessel. So I took all the courses and I would pass each level. I'd pass the written and I'd pass the practical. And finally, one Saturday morning, I wake up because now is my last practical test to receive my captain's license. Much to my dismay, it is a stormy, stormy day. And it's not really a day you want to go out sailing, especially under an examination type setting. And then I thought to myself, well, you will eventually probably get caught in a storm. So it's a good idea to get out there and test your skills. I drove down to the club and the examiner was a man who really had it in for me. You could see it in his eyes. You could almost see him rubbing his hands together like, oh boy, I'm going to break you today. And I said to myself, no, you're not. Bring it on which he did. So we all got in our foul weather gear. Can you see that? And went sailing into the bay. And there are several tasks I had to do. And we would check the box. And once I completed all those tasks, the exam was over. Such as setting the anchor in foul weather was not fun. Tacking, which is pretty easy to do. But then there was one final task. He said, I want you to do a controlled jive. No sailor in their right mind wants to do a controlled jive and they would never do it in a storm. And I thought, he's crazy. This is dangerous. It could kill us both. But then I wanted that captain's license and I said to myself, I'm going to do it. I looked at the size of that boom. And back then, I had no upper body strength. My friends called me Tweety Bird Arms. I thought, I can do this. So I imagined all the steps. Did that control jive. Did it perfectly. I thought, Ooh, okay, that's the last thing I have to do. We get to go in. No, for some reason, he really wanted to break me. And we stayed out and he had me go through every single task again. I was wet. I was cold. I was tired. I just wanted to take it in. And I was mentally exhausted because you have to really think hard, much harder in a storm. Anyway, I think we're going to go in. He goes, I want you to do a controlled jibe. And I thought, this is so dangerous. What is he doing? But I want that license. So I looked at that boom, thought I, I'm going to do it again. I did it again. And I thought, good, we're done. We can take her in. On our way in, for the third time, he says, I want you to do a controlled jive. And I got angry. I looked him in the eye. I said, I'm the captain of this vessel and we're taking her in. We docked the boat. I cleaned up the boat and buttoned her down and I went in and talked to the manager and told him what happened and he got fired. We all know pride comes before a fall combined with being attached to an outcome. I gave my power away because I was attached to an outcome and let him have all the power which put us in dangerous situations and I was an accomplice in that as well. So here are ways we give our power away. Road rage. Someone cuts us off and we're hot. We're angry. We might say things to them. 
How many of us complain about the weather? It's outside of our control. We give our power away when something triggers us and it launches mental chatter. And how many of you cannot turn your mind off? If someone triggers you, you start thinking about how you want to respond. And the other way we can give our power away is our reactions to words. We give our power away to words. At the root of giving your power away is when your emotions, negative emotions, get the best of you. And the biggest culprit are our thoughts from an incident. And from that incident, we create an inner story and dialogue which stir up more emotions and we are robbed of our inner peace. So let's get practical. What about the bully in the workplace? A lot of clients I work with encounter bullies. So what happens to us when someone is a bully? Years ago, I had a 13 year old boy and he was a small boy in my office and he was being bullied and he was very unhappy and he kept getting smaller and smaller. One day I said, listen, you go to school, you try to be small, you hold your head down, hoping the bully will leave you alone. Is that right? And he said, yes. I said, he's seeking you out. I said, I want you to go into school expecting him to bully you. Be prepared. Walk in with your shoulders held up high. Walk right up to him and say, knock it off. Turn on your heel and walk away. I had him practice this in the office a few times out loud till he really could stand up tall like I stood up against the examiner. He said, what's gonna happen if I do that? I said, he'll leave you alone. Bullies are cowards and when you confront the bully, they'll go find someone else to pick on. So, back to the sailing test. What did I do? What did I use to take my power back? What did I instill in this 13-year-old boy to take his power back? Anger. Let's look at anger and how it can propel you to take your power back. Often, sorry, anger often has negative connotations and yet it is fire energy which can transform you. Here is part of the alchemist prayer. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. And there are also several references in the Old Testament about the refiner's fire. O oh, most singular and unspeakable presence, first and last in the universe, heighten the fury of my fire. Heighten the fury of my fire and burn away the dross of my being. Cleanse my soiled soul. Bathe me in your awesome light. Set me free from my past. Set me free from my past. Cut me loose from my boundary. Our past can hold us captive. When we want something bad enough, it's our past that can be holding us captive from actually fulfilling it. Staying in your power is about not reacting and getting emotional from anything outside of your control. I cannot control the behavior or words of another person. The only thing I have control over are my words, my thoughts, and my actions. Everything else is out of my control. And this is why I tell my clients on a regular basis, let go of the outcome. 
When we are triggered by something someone has said, here's what I suggest to my clients so they do not spend three days mulling over how they want to respond. The emotions triggered are like striking a match. Imagine the match is struck. You hold it and allow yourself to acknowledge your emotions. Then blow out the flame. So you do not do something and burn yourself. Oftentimes, if we react, our words burn us. I believe in replacing the negative with something positive. I tell them to send that person a blessing after they blow out the match. We are then freed up from the trigger and the three days of thinking of our response. I have CEOs who say, I'm not sending I'm not him not I said, oh, yes, said, you oh, are. Well, I give them three choices. Three and I say, choose and one. Choose one. one. Yeah. Eventually, Eventually, they will, they will be freed up from free that free negative free energy. energy. When you send someone a blessing, oh, it elevates you out of this negative realm. And the Dalai Lama said, when we send someone a blessing, we, the sender, are transformed into magnificent potential. I had a client walk in my office one day. He goes, I thought you were just talking about all this woo-woo stuff. But when I did send the blessing, I didn't think about it again. I did feel transformed. When you do that, it eventually becomes a habit. My sailing teacher could have passed or failed me. Because of his issues, I became tangled up in his energy, which, which set the stage for a battle of wills. Not a healthy dynamic. I had to let go of my pride, my inner fear of not passing. And had I done that, I would have stayed in my power and called him out on the second jive, if not the first and I may have decided to cancel until the weather was better. Mm -hmm.